Good afternoon, my little cookie crumbs, and welcome back to Villains Prince. This is the final episode. Oh my goodness, I know, right? I thought that this would be a little bit longer, but nah, again, I just didn't want to drag it out any further. Now let's see if Izuku, or rather King Izuku, can keep his promise to his kingdom. Let's go. The day was today, and today was the day. Izuku was ready for this day. He had sent a message up to the surface world, declaring war between the villains and the heroes. Only one will walk away. His kingdom was also ready. People of various ages height, weight, quirks, no quirks. His kingdom wanted to fight. They wanted to avenge their fallen kings and to see their new king rise above the tyranny, the tyranny that took their beloved kings away from them. Izuku had been training for this day. He was ready He had donned his armor, shoulder plates, chest plate, knee pads, elbow pads, and of course, fingerless gloves that had steel knuckles on them so he can deliver the best punches. Izuku was also not without a weapon, or weapons he should say. He had hidden knives, a few guns, but he had chosen a scythe as his main weapon, fitting as he would be going after All Might. He had called All Might out specifically when he sent out the calling card for the war. He would be the one to take down that big oafish menace. Yuzuku descended the stairs and sat in his throne, in the throne room. His people were waiting for him. He gave the signal, and soon he was being televised across the kingdom. My people, I hope you are ready. I am ready. We attack tonight. And we will be victorious. The screens cut off. And the cries and echoes of the kingdom could be heard. His people were also ready. Izuku stood up and walked out. All right, kid. Let's do this, Toppy said. We're with you, little birdie. Heck yeah, man, let's get this party started, Dinky said excited. Don't get too excited, Kiki, Hitoshi said. We're going to war, this isn't going to be fun. He's right, we need to be mentally prepared, not just physically. Ah, come on, who says we can't have fun? We're villains, right? Kiki, fine, fine, I'll dial it down. Boys, are you ready? The Duchess entered. Yes, Mom. Yes, Auntie Nem. Izuku, I just want to say how proud I am of you. We all are proud, kid, Dobby said. Yes, very proud. You've come such a long way. Your dads would be even prouder if they were here. Izuku smiled sadly at that. It had been almost a year since his father's death. Both of his fathers. He missed them both dearly. He had numerous nightmares and trained so hard to the point of exhaustion. One night, his papa visited him in a dream. He was a little boy again in this dream. 
When he saw his papa, he jumped to his feet. He was in a wide open meadow with beautiful flowers. Papa! he cried. Oh, my little prince. Papa, I'm. Don't you apologize, Izuku. None of this is your fault. I'm just sorry for leaving you so soon. It's okay, Papa. You didn't mean to leave me behind. I just. I wish. I know, sweetheart. But your father and I are so, so proud of you. Really? Really? And you're going to do us even more proud. And Zuzu, know that your dad and I always loved you and we will always love you. And we miss you so much. And when it comes your time, we'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, Papa. Just don't go dying so soon, okay? After all, you have a promise to keep to your people. Yes, Papa. His Papa got up and vanished. He hummed a tune that was familiar. It was his lullaby. Bye, Papa. I love you. And Hizuku woke up in tears. He was in his papa and his dad's bed. Ever since their death, he moved into their room and refused to move out. Soon, his dad visited him in his dream. He was a little bit older than when he was with his papa. And in this dream, it was nighttime. Izuku sat upon the edge of a building, looking out at a cityscape. Beautiful, isn't it? His dad said behind him. Hi, Daddy. My little prince. I'm so sorry, Izuku. It's okay, Daddy. I don't blame you. I don't blame you or Papa. Come here. Let me just hold you. Shoda took Izuku into his arms and they both looked over at the cityscape. Papa? I mean, Daddy? Hmm? Are you and Papa okay? We're fine, Izuku. We're just fine. Okay. You're not in pain? No, we're not. We're safe. Are you happy? We're happy that we're together. But we're sad that we left you behind. It's okay. It's not okay, Izuku. No, it is okay, Daddy. It's... It's not okay now, but it will be. I'm not alone, okay? I got Auntie Nem and Dobby, and I got Kago and my cousins, and I still have my family. It sucks that you and Papa are gone, and I miss you both so, so much. But I'm not by myself. I know. And I'm happy for that. Your Papa and I saw your coronation, and we heard your speech. Oh, Isuku, we're so proud of you. You are going to bring our kingdom glory. I know it. Yes, Papa. I mean, Daddy. You can say Papa. You know he's here. I know. He's over there. <laughs> Sashi, come on. Hi, my baby. Mm -mm. I missed you so much, he said, giving Izuku a big hug. The three just looked at the cityscape as the dream faded away. Izuku woke up crying then, too. Soon the day came, and it was time for the war. His kingdom marched up 
to the surface and into the middle of Japan. Well, into the middle of the prefecture. All night, and a band of other pro heroes were waiting for him. Young Aizawa, please reconsider this. It does not have to end this way. We have programs and stuff to help you. You could be a hero. After what you did and after what you stole from me? How about no? Stole? Your father's. It was their fault that they died. Don't you dare speak to them like that. Or speak about them like that. You know nothing, All Might. All Might fell quiet. All of Japan fell quiet. It's time to end this once and for all. It's time that society gets rewritten. Let's go, All Might. Let's dance. And the war began. What felt like days, what felt like weeks, what felt like a year, was maybe only a few hours. Everyone was fighting tirelessly and brutally. There were already so many casualties. Yuzuku and All Might fought to keep up with each other. Every dodge, every punch, every hit, scratch, cut, it all hurt them both. It looked like they had been dancing, some weird dance. Izuku had once had the upper hand, but lost it, but gained it back. All Might was getting tired, and so was Izuku. Both were badly wounded. Lightning flashed into the sky, lighting up the city. Thunder crashed loudly. Izuku, with still fire in his eyes, looked at All Might. It can still end, young Aizawa, All Might said tirelessly. You could end this. It doesn't have to be this way. Look, young Aizawa. Look at all these casualties. Izuku looked. And All Might was right. Pro heroes bloodied and dead. Some of the members of his kingdom were also in the same way. While more pro-heroes were dead than people of his kingdom, it still was a sight. You can end this, young Midoriya. What did you call me? M- Midoriya? How did you know what my name was? Oh, um, I, uh, what I mean, how do you know? I looked into you. I know what happened to your mother. I know what happened to in Denver. I know hero society just isn't what it was or what it should be. But young Aizawa, look at... You look. You look all night. Look carefully at those dead pro-heroes behind you. This is what hero society is. All you pro-heroes want is fame and fortune. It's never about the civilians. It's never about them. And what about the corkless people? No one has stood up for them in years. But my kingdom has. Look at the quirkless people now that are fighting and getting the upper hand with you pros. And look, the number of pros is less than the number of the people in my kingdom. Don't speak. Not another word. And you're right. I can end this. And it will end. The two rushed forward, and the final blows were struck. 
Izuku swung down his scythe in a mighty swing. And All Might got in a good hit. As All Might's head rolled, Izuku flew backwards from the hit. He was pretty sure his ribs were broken, and he was bleeding eternally. He was already badly wounded, and not having a cork gave him a very heavy disadvantage. He rolled to a stop, breathing heavily. He closed his eyes. The sounds of the war around him stopped. Izuku, with the last bit of his strength, stood up and stood proud. He went over to All Might's head and picked it up. Look what your hero society has done, he said loudly. Those of you who still think that hero society is perfect, look at this. Look at the mess you have created. And it's like I told All Might. Yuzuku continued to say his speech. Hero society is done, he said. Your hero has fallen and the villains have won. Izuku threw All Might's head and watched it land with the rest of him. Izuku then stumbled away, the villains and the rest of his kingdom following. With cheers of victory as the other pro heroes retreated, Izuku, once he got to the Akigahara, collapsed. The sounds of his family rang out, and they called to him, and darkness swallowed him whole. Izuku was floating. He felt like he was in a pool, a pool with just still water. He heard the sounds of his daddy and papa talking to him, but he couldn't hear the words. He opened his eyes, and there they were, standing above him. They reached out toward him, and he reached for them. He was pulled out of the pool and onto the edge. Isuku, baby, you have to wake up, honey. The war is over. The heroes surrendered. Hero society is done. You did it, baby. You did it. I did it. I feel like I'm dying. You're not going to die. Not yet, sweet boy, Shoda said. Listen to your papa and wake up. Can't I go with you? Oh, sweetheart, you made a promise to our people, remember? You have to live. And what about your cousins? And your Auntie Nem and... And Kago and Dobby. Oh, sweetheart, don't give up. Not yet. You promised to be a good king. Now go. We'll see you... We'll see you another time. Izuku nodded and looked up at his dad. Daddy... Go, Izuku. Your papa and I will be fine. It's okay. You can go. You can go, sweetheart. Okay. I love you. We love you, too. You did such a good job, Izuku. We're so proud of you. Izuku had opened his eyes. He was in a hospital. Just as soon as he opened his eyes, he closed them again, this time in a healing sleep. A year later, and there was a festival going on. Izuku, of course, was in attendance. He 
had always loved the summer festival. It was in a beautiful jade green kimono with swirls of black and red and gold. Of course, the top of his head was his circlet. He was wearing his dad's bracelet. And this time, he had his papa's choker on. Despite his papa's happy demeanor, he was kind of a closeted goth. He had a very special choker that his mother had given him before she died. It was black and thick. It had chains on it. It looked beautiful. Izuku wore these in order to keep his dad's clothes to him. His cousin's Denki was right next to him wearing a kimono with little lightning bolts on them. Hitoshi had a beautiful lavender kimono and his cousin Shoto had a beautiful water blue kimono. It looked plain, but it suited him. Behind him were Keigo and Dobby, who were wearing matching kimonos. Honestly, they looked like prisoners with the black and white stripes, but Izuku wasn't going to question it. His auntie Nem was in a beautiful regal kimono. It was silky and shiny, and it was a deep, deep purple. It suited her well. Oh, boys, you made it, her, his auntie Nem said, running towards them. She had left for the festival earlier as they were getting ready, stating, quote, unquote, she couldn't wait anymore. It's about time you got here, my little loves. Mom... We would have been ready sooner if somebody... Oh, hush you. So, Izuku, what do you think of the summer festival thus far? I think it looks great. Everybody did such a good job. Hey, guys, a voice crawled out. It's the king. Uh, it's King Izuku. The king, he's here. Hello, king. Hello, our king. Izuku greeted everybody. Hello, my people. Hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> Let's have a good festival, huh? The kingdom cheered. Above the surface, All Might had been laid to rest. So had the other pro heroes. Hero society had died. In fact, it was no longer a thing in Japan. Many of the pro heroes that were pros had retired and started careers that they never thought they would have. Many of the pros became doctors, lawyers, even policemen. Some pro heroes turned dark side and s sought out asylum in the kingdom. Izuku granted it to them only on one condition. They swore their undying allegiance to them, and if they ever betrayed them or thought about it, they would be put to death immediately. They agreed. Among one of those pro heroes was the bunny hero, Mirko. She thought Izuku was badass and just had to be on his side, because after all, he was right. Hero society was corrupted, and nothing was going to change about it. He was the change that the world needed. The above-ground world tried to merge with the underground, but Izuku wouldn't allow it. There was no way that these two sides of the coin could live and coexist peacefully. Even though heroes and villains no longer existed, and yes, they still, tr and yes, while they traded goods and what have you, the two worlds just weren't ready to merge. Izuku thought that was more in the future. But right now, he was only 18, and that was for something when he was in his late 30s. He had other plans. Bigger plans, of course. 
He was no longer a villain's prince. He was a king. The great demon king Izuku Aizawa. And nobody would dare cross him. They didn't need to. His people were living in peace, harmony, and prosperity. In fact, they were one of the richest countries. Yeah, they were considered a country now. And Izuku was happy. His country, his people, his family were alive and thriving. And that's all he could ever hope for. Izuku looked over into the distance and saw two men. One man, tall with blonde long locks and a fiery kimono that had a phoenix on the back of it. The other, a panther on the back of his all jet black kimono. He had jet black hair and eyes to match. It was his papa and his daddy. The two smiled at him and waved goodbye. He did the same. He knew it truly wasn't goodbye. He would see them later. But he smiled. He heard a voice whisper in his ear. Two voices. Happy 18th birthday, Izuku. We love you so much, kiddo. And they disappeared into the night. A tear was shed. Izu, what's wrong? Shoto said. Oh, nothing. I'm okay. I, uh... You thought of your dads, didn't you? Hitoshi asked. Yeah. They're here with me in spirit. I can't help but miss them, but... Hey, it's okay to miss them. Especially on today. But it's okay to have fun, you know. They would want you to. So what are we waiting for? Denki asked. Let's go have fun already. And he raced off with the other two boys rushing off to catch up. Hey, wait for me, Izuku said, snapping out of his thoughts. The festival went on and so did their lives. And that's the end of this story, OMG. Did I just complete a story here on YouTube? Like, what, 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 what? Excuse me? <laughs> okay, guys, that was Villain's Prince. I know that that was a quick story. I honestly thought it would be longer, but... Like I said, I mapped it out and it just... It didn't work being long, okay? <laughs> Uh, Hell's Bells and Panther Tracks is still going. Bathed in Midnight is still going. I have another uh, multi-chapter story that I have coming your way. And so on and so forth. And I will see you next time, guys. Thank you so much for all the loves. Keep hitting that like button. Keep hitting that subscribe button. I know I said I wouldn't force you, but come on. Please. Alright, enough of that. <laughs> enough. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much. I love you all. Bye-bye.